。あけましておめでとうございます。Happy New Year! Bonne année 2024! So we're well into January already, and by now I know you guys are probably tired from seeing all of these goals video for 2024, even language study goals, so I'll make this video today short and sweet for you guys. みなさんこんにちは、アリです。Hi everyone! My name is Ali, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and you don't know me, First of all, hi, welcome. I study languages in my free time as a hobby and I have been sharing my whole journey learning Japanese from zero since 2019 on Instagram first and now YouTube. And I am now learning two other languages as well and today we are actually discussing my 2024 language study goals. Right, so in 2024, there are three languages I want to focus on. In fact, just like 2023, I have Japanese, which I am studying at advanced level. I have Mandarin Chinese, which I am studying at beginner level. And I have Russian, which I am a beginner at a very, very beginner. For Japanese, my level, as I said, is pretty much advanced. I am already a proficient user of the language, which means I can virtually understand pretty much what I hear or read. I can express myself quite fluently and more or less coherently, and I can also work out the nuances of the language in written form or oral form. If you want to know more about my level in Japanese in detail, I have actually produced a video about a month ago on that, on my actual level in Japanese right now, in which I take you through all of the language skills in details on what I can and cannot do yet in Japanese using the JLPT can do self evaluation list. So if you're interested to know more, I refer you to that video. But being proficient in the language doesn't mean I mastered it yet. I, in fact, I am far from it. And even though I have passed last year the last level of the Japanese language proficiency test level N1, it really doesn't mean I am done studying the language. In fact, there are many areas in which I can still improve. So that will be my goal from now on with Japanese. Overall, in general, my input skills in Japanese are quite strong. So, my reading and listening skills are quite strong. But on the reverse, my expression skills, so my output skills,、uh, my speaking and writing are quite weak still. So, my objectives this year will actually focus on that, on improving my output skills while perfecting my input skills. So, my four objectives for the year with Japanese are first, getting myself to a university level. So, what I mean by that is basically getting myself to the same level of language skills which a Japanese native university student is at. And that is quite a big goal. I know that. But then, that is kind of the next step for me after passing the JLPT N1, since I am done with. The most widely recognized language proficiency exam for Japanese, I need, a, I need to go a step higher. And a step higher for me would be to basically get myself to the same level as a Japanese native here. Getting myself to a, an overall university level in Japanese would mean that basically I would finally bridge the gaps in my common knowledge. So, this is not only language skills. It's also covering general knowledge in history of the country, in culture, all of these things which everyone knows because everyone has been growing up in the same environment here in Japan, and which I lack because simply I was growing up in France at that same time. So I really need to bridge that gap. And so I think bringing myself to university level will help me do that. In terms of language skills, what I will be working towards this year is really this will help me expand my vocab a lot more since the JLPT framework really doesn't cover all the vocab. And so bringing myself again to university level will help me bridge the gap here in terms of vocab, but also in terms of expression skills in general, since I will need to learn academic writing in Japanese, which I'm very excited about, and presenting. In Japanese, how to present、uh, anything orally in Japanese, and I will definitely work on that 
as well this year. And in fact, in broader terms, upgrading my expression in writing skills as well as my expression while speaking will be my second and third objectives of the year. And finally, my fourth objective of the year for Japanese will be to upgrade my kanji level, like in general. So when it comes to kanji, there are three dimensions within kanji knowledge. There is recognition of kanji, reading of kanji characters and writing. So memorizing exactly how they are written, in which order of the strokes, etc. And these three dimensions are very, very different from each other. And you can absolutely be proficient in one dimension without being proficient in the other two dimensions and, you know, being proficient in two dimensions in, and not the third one. And this is exactly what is happening with me. I am proficient in recognizing the kanji, so knowing their meaning and reading kanji since I read a lot in Japanese. However, I am at absolutely zero level when it concerns writing kanji characters since this was not a priority for me until now. This was not a skill that was tested at the different language exams I have sat until now. So this year will be the year I finally focus on upgrading this particular dimension of my kanji knowledge. I have two bonus objectives for the year in Japanese and they concern both of them language exams because I don't want language exams to be main objectives for me for this year 2024 since I just sat and passed the JRPTN1 in July 2023 last year. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself this year. So I will go and sit the BJT again, the business Japanese test, if I can and if I have the time, the leeway to prepare it. I had passed it once in 2021, in September 2021, and I had obtained then uh, the J2 level. So if I sit it again this year or next year, I will want to get to a higher level. So either J1 or even higher than this, J1+. plus. But that will be a bonus objective for me this year. The second bonus objective would be to sit and hopefully pass the Kanji Kente 6. So the sixth level of the Kanji Kente, which is not a very high level, but this would still be a good challenge for me in the sense that right now my Kanji writing level, again, is not at all at this level. So that would be a big challenge for me to bring myself to this level before the end of the year. So I put this as a bonus objective. So that would be all for my main objectives and bonus objectives for the year in Japanese. So in a word, my mindset with Japanese is that I still adore the language and I want to study it as much as possible still and bring myself up to the maximum level I can reach in this language. My love for the language has not depleted over the years. In fact, it has grown <laughs> exponentially and I'm still in that infatuation phase with the language. It's it is still there and I really want to keep that flame uh, that I have for the language, keep that flame alive. That will be my overall mindset for the year. In general, I just want to be even more comfortable with the language and, and this will still be my main focus for the year, studying Japanese. I am living in Japan and I am reminded every day of the areas in which I can still do some work and which I can still improve. And so, you know, this year, I really want to bridge those gaps. So my level right now in Mandarin Chinese, even though I have been studying Mandarin Chinese since March 2022, my level in Mandarin Chinese is not that high. I am still at kind of a beginner level. I have studied Mandarin Chinese a bit on and off uh, since 2022. I had long breaks in my studying. However, I really still want to study the language. I still love it. I, I still like it very much. This will be my second priority of the year. So when we take each of my language skills in Mandarin Chinese, my input skills are higher than my output skills. So my reading in Chinese is not bad. I think I am close to an intermediate level of reading in Chinese. And this is, of course, thanks to my knowledge in Japanese, since, in fact, I started reading in Chinese from day one of studying the language. 
my listening skills are getting there in the sense that I understand a lot more than I did one year ago, for example. So, um, you know, it's getting there. Uh, when I'm listening to something, I can sort of, you know, decipher which words I know and uh, understand kind of broad terms where the sentences start, where they, where they end, the general m meaning of, the general theme of what I'm watching. And yeah, just in general, I'm starting to grasp more and more of what I'm listening to. So it's getting there, but I'm still at very much a beginner level. And then when we go to speaking and writing, I can't express myself in Chinese at all. So I'm still at, you know, even before beginner, I'm still novice there. So my objectives for the year for 2024 in Mandarin Chinese, in fact, I have only one main objective and that will be to reach HSK2 level this year in Mandarin Chinese. So HSK2 level. HSK is for Mandarin Chinese what the GRPT is to the Japanese language. So this is the language proficiency exam for Mandarin Chinese. And so bringing myself to HSK2 level would mean more or less an upper beginner level. So still a beginner level, but I have done some research. This would basically be equivalent to a level A1 in the language. So by the end of the year, I want to be able to understand sentences and frequently used expressions related to things that are relevant to me. The most common sentences, the most common verbs, the most common words really, the most common vocab words. And I also want to be able to communicate in very simple terms. So overall, this objective would mean that I need to basically upgrade all of my language skills, right? So my input skills and my output skills up to that level. Although, to be very honest, I think the speaking skill will be the one skill I won't be able to upgrade that much this year. This is because this will be part of my bonus objectives. I don't want to pressurize myself too much on speaking Chinese this year. But still, if I can, I will take conversation classes. So that would be my first bonus objective of the year. My second bonus objective of the year would be to read one book. Now, I have two books in my collection right now in Mandarin Chinese. I have the Graded Chinese Reader 500 Words book. And I also have the first Harry Potter book in my collection. And... Realistically, I won't be able to read both before the end of the year. So I want to focus on one. In particular, it would probably be the graded Chinese reader. But still, I have the Harry Potter book. And if I want to start reading that as well, then I will do that this year. But this is all in my bonus objective category. So when it comes to my overall mindset with studying Mandarin Chinese this year, I am quite relaxed with Mandarin Chinese. This is not a language that is required for me to know. There is no external pressure for me to know it. I'm not moving to China tomorrow. So, However, I really like this language and it is also an easy language for me to pick up on at this point since I know Japanese and I am using the laddering technique to learn Mandarin Chinese using Japanese. So overall, it is quite easy for me to learn the language and I really, really like it. I really want to know it. That's my overall mindset. That's my general drive to learn the language and my overall goals with the language, not specifically for this year, but in general with Mandarin Chinese, would be to be able to read comfortably in Chinese. Again, I've said many times that this was my main objective in all of my languages. I like to read and I want to be able to read in multiple languages. So with Mandarin Chinese, that's also the case. And I also want to be able to, you know, speak at a, an intermediate level, let's say, in Chinese uh, comfortably. These are my two finishing lines on the horizon. If I can get myself to be comfortable in both these areas, then I will be satisfied with my Mandarin Chinese.
Now let's talk about Russian. My level in Russian is still very, very beginner. I started studying Russian in summer 2022 and I have loved every second of it. Uh, studying this language is a joy. I really do it only for fun. I love how it's written. I love how it sounds. I am pushing through, even though the grammar seems to be difficult. It really doesn't bother me at all. And I'm prepared to learn it for as many years as it takes until I reach a comfortable level in Russian as well. So right now I'm still very beginner, as I said, in all of the language skills in both input and output skills. But so far, I can tell you that I have mostly been uh, practicing my listening skills and reading skills, so input skills in Russian. My year objectives for Russian will be to reach an A1 level in all skills, which would mean that I'm able to grasp the simpler grammatical structures, I'm able to read a little bit simple texts, and I would be able to understand also uh, simple things. When it comes to expressing myself, I don't think I'll be able to reach any meaningful level by the end of the year. So it's not part of my objectives, but you know, I'll just focus on what I can do for now. And by the end of the year, I just want to be more comfortable with the language in general and if I can reach an A1 level that would be absolutely great. My second main objective for the year in Russian would be to upgrade my writing skills, so my Cyrillic skills in particular using the Russian alphabet. Here I just want to first get more comfortable with writing Cyrillic in the first place because that's still quite hard for me to write comfortably. I'm much more comfortable writing in Chinese for example since I know and Japanese kanji and Japanese kanji are derived from traditional Chinese characters which have been imported to Japan. In general, I'm much more comfortable writing characters like ideograms. When it comes to Cyrillic, that's a completely different kind of writing system that I'm learning. So I'm still in that process of learning it. And so this year, before the end of the year, I want to be much more comfortable writing it. My second sub objective <laughs> regarding Cyrillic would be to learn how to to finally actually learn how to write in cursive. In Cyrillic you can write either in, in typed letters but then there is also the handwritten Cyrillic which is then cursive Cyrillic. Native speakers tend to actually mix those two together but in any case I really want to learn how to write in cursive entirely so that would be my second sub objective of the year regarding Cyrillic. My bonus objective for the year actually concerns one particular resource one particular study resource and this is the Easy Russian podcast which I found last year and I singled it out as my best resource to learn Russian and so this year I really want to focus on this resource and if I can get myself to cover the materials of one podcast episode per month which would make 12 podcast episodes for the year I would be really really satisfied with myself so I will try to do that so one episode a month on the Easy Russian website you can access the full transcripts, interactive transcripts with translation for each of their episodes. And so basically studying the materials of one episode a month would help me cover reading skills, reading the transcripts, of course, listening skills, listening to the podcast itself, and will help me grasp a lot of vocab, a lot of different grammar structures, and of course, conjugation. Now, when it comes to my mindset for studying Russian this year in 2024, I am even more relaxed with Russian than I am with Mandarin Chinese, just because I'm learning Russian for fun, really. It's entirely for my own enjoyment. I do not have any perspective of using the language anytime soon. I'm simply learning it, studying it for myself as a hobby in my free time. So I will keep it this way this year too. And so that's my general mindset for the language then. I just adore this language already. And so whenever I can, whenever I'm done studying with Japanese and then Mandarin Chinese, then I will study some Russian this year. 
all right here you have it guys so to end this video here i just want to say that you know i am learning languages for fun and i'm in this very very you know luxurious position where i don't have any external pressure really to learn languages so that's also why i'm able to you know be so relaxed regarding my objectives and my goals and i am aware that i'm in a very very luxurious position here so arguably i do have a lot of objectives for the year but then it's really only for me to organize organize myself and keep that flame of inner motivation alive to really study all of these languages. And of course, this year I will make a lot more videos about how I'm able to actually fit all of that language study into my schedule on top of the other things and the other projects I have going on. Please keep an eye out for that. I will vlog a lot this year. I will probably make a lot of weekly vlogs specifically focused on one language. So for example, like how much Russian I study for a week in any given week for example uh, so I'm, I hope you'll be excited for that too but otherwise there is also another thing which I will cover this year and which I haven't covered at all in this video it will be you know the resources I want to use for each language this year and that will be the object of multiple other videos because I do have a lot to say here uh, so again I hope you'll be excited to see that too but that will be it for today I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next Next one, bye bye, Matani. Mm -hmm.